For anime Kohai viewers who would want to support the creator using Gcash, please send her your email so she can give you access to exclusive videos and latest episodes. Her Gcash number is 0948-690-7705 under her mom's name JL. Any amount of donations is highly appreciated. You may want to contact her at animekohai22 at gmail.com. Deftly avoiding the spear tuna's solid exoskeleton, Hakuro's knife ran through it like butter. It was the most artistically beautiful dissection I had ever seen, even Shuna was surprised at his dexterity. Put a knife in his hand, and he truly had the air of a craftsman. Sheehan, behind me, really wanted to help out with the knife I had gifted her, but I dissuaded her from the idea. The reason should be obvious. I couldn't feed inferior goods to a group of world dignitaries. This wasn't something I could joke around with. Sheehan was my secretary slash bodyguard, and I wanted her to stick to that. How did the crowd respond? Well, more than a few were surprised, even scared, of the vicious-looking sea creature when it was first brought in. But as Hakuro's trimming unfolded, looks of joy started to creep over their faces. Then the head came off, the body was cut into four sections, and the dishes slowly filled up with the resulting sashimi pieces. In the center were the fattier cuts of white sashimi, the red pieces fanned out around it. The mere sight of that made me salivate, but the crowd, most of whom had never had anything like this before, was a little more nervous. As they continued to watch, Hakuro began to make sushi out of some of the pieces. This feat, I wasn't expecting. White rice, cooking sake, vinegar, mirin, and soy sauce. We had all of those now, and they added incalculable depth to our cuisine, as was clearly being demonstrated here. But, man, I never thought I'd get to eat real sushi in this world. Apparently, Hakuro's grandfather had told him about it when he was young, but, phew. I sure felt for that guy. Coming to a world like this, and all he could think about was sushi, this thing he'd never enjoy again in his lifetime. He must have had so many regrets. Compared to him, I had it damn lucky. Like Hanada told me as well, trying to replicate Japanese cuisine in this world was, to say the least, a challenge. Hakuro's granddad, though, huh? I remember him described as an otherworlder named Bukuya Araki. Did he live back in, like, the Edo era, maybe? Samurai and shoguns and so on? I doubted he was a sushi chef himself, but when could he have been born? But, ah, it doesn't matter. Got a live life in the now. The buffet table was alive with chatting guests. The food was a hit, everyone raving about it. Shuna and Yoshida had given everything they had to their team up, so I'd say they deserved all the praise they got. On the other hand, the sashimi and nigiri sushi Hakuro made for the crowd was still being wholeheartedly ignored. Maybe the terrifying sight of that spear tuna was a little too stomach-churning to whet their appetites. I spotted at least one show-off telling his friend, good heavens, that's an A-rank, and so on. There's one trivia whiz in every crowd, isn't there? But, come on. It was freshly cut sashimi, there was no way it could taste bad. I wished they wouldn't act so boorish and give it a try, at least. In this world, you could detect poison in food without eating it first, so everybody here knew that wasn't a concern. The visuals must have convinced them this was some kind of low-grade garbage food. Well, if nobody was willing to step up to the plate, it was time for me to lead off. I'll take one. By all means. Hakuro was kind enough to whip up a new piece of Toro Fatty Tuna for me. I placed some soy sauce on it and popped it in my mouth. The combination of fragrant wasabi and the tuna's melt-in-your-mouth umami came together, forming an explosion of supreme taste. It was so good, so good. I mean, I'd been to crazy fancy places in Ginza before, and I'd never had anything at this level. This is amazing, Hakuro. That it is, I'm sure. I was concerned such fine fish may not last long tonight, but I fear the audience reaction is a tad disappointing. It will be something to look forward to over drinks tonight, though, no doubt. Hakuro and the rest of the staff would eat after the guests left. He must have been hoping for some spear tuna to enjoy with his sake later. And he was right, the snub from the guests was a pity, but if he'd made this for himself anyway, then no harm, no foul. In fact, he almost seemed to want them to hate it. Unfortunately, it was Hakuro who had to be disappointed. Would you make me a piece of tuna underbelly without the wasabi, please? Well, well, who's this? Someone with a lot of guts, asking for the otoro, arguably the best part of the whole tuna. And no wasabi? What are you, a child? Oh, shut it. I don't like that sting in my nose. 
It was Hanada, dressed in a simple night dress and acting a little too big for her britches for my taste. Ordering sushi like it was her divine right. Too bad there isn't a little more variety. And now she was complaining about that? First no wasabi, then a larger menu? Okay, I'll grant you that not everybody's on the wasabi bandwagon, it can be tough if you've never had it before. I asked for no wasabi up until around middle school age myself. But as a grown-up, a real connoisseur knows how to enjoy the flavor of the wasabi as part of the package. What do you mean, a real connoisseur? What's that even matter? If it tastes good, it tastes good. She was chortling at me now, but she was right. God damn it. Why does Hinata have to be so rational about everything? So she picked up the plate from Hakuro, beaming. Slowly, she placed a piece inside her mouth, closing her eyes. This, really is excellent. First sashimi and then sushi. It rankles me, but I have to respect you, Rimuru. Sounds like a satisfied customer. She savored the tuna, a look of joy on her face. Right. Said Yuki, coming up from behind. I'll have one, too. Oh, and with wasabi, because I'm not a kid. Given the jab at Hanada, he must have been observing us for a while. I knew he had sampled quite a bit from the buffet, but he must have still been just as hungry. Taking a plate from Hakuro, he finished off the contents fast, no doubt waiting for this moment. Whoa, it's just melt in your mouth. Man, getting to eat sushi this good, over here, it's honestly kind of moving. He was already reaching for the sushi as he spoke, a smile on his face. It certainly is different from freshwater fish countered Hanada. Is it not? You know, I asked the free guild for fish like this, but they turned me down, and I can't magically transport them to me. I had given up on it. But this definitely brings a little more joy to my life. Apparently, Hanada had missed seafood so much that she'd asked Yuki to bring some over to her. That, however, was logistically difficult, there were so many issues to deal with, they couldn't find anyone to tackle the job. Hanada must have brought that up to get back at Yuki for his wasabi jab. Well, I couldn't do much about that. Yuki replied with a pained grin. The northern seas are too full of giant fish to be safe, and the south is too far away to make transport very efficient. And you can't make a profit off seafood if you're shipping it in just from inland waters. He was right. Logistics in this world were still pretty weak. As I expected, inlanders had almost no chance to sample fresh fish. Getting seafood to them was just too difficult. Wagons could carry only a little at a time, and temperature control was a major hassle. You'd have to either bring along a sorcerer or have vast quantities of ice available in each town, and even then, there was no telling if you could maintain freshness from the shores all the way to inland cities. You'd have to be pretty rich to have a chance at a fresh fillet, and in fact, the idea probably wouldn't even occur to you in the first place. The concept of fish in stews and such existed, but again, the problem was supply. This, too, was just what I pictured. Thus, I wanted to take this opportunity to tell the world about the delicacies they could enjoy only in my nation. I'd build more of a distribution network later, but until then, I wanted Tempest to have a monopoly. Whether they were put off by the spear tuna's appearance or hesitant about exotic food cultures, nobody had touched the sushi or sashimi. But now, with both Hanada and Yuki singing its praises, the tides were about to turn. A man stood up from the corner King Gazel was occupying and came over. Sir Rimuru, can we have some as well? He asked. If I recalled correctly, this was Dolph, captain of the Pegasus Knights. Certainly, go ahead, I'll have it brought over. As if on command, Hakuro's hands began moving at astonishing speed. The plates were quickly lined with fresh-made sushi, sashimi, and osuimono, a light seafood broth. These were brought over by our elf girl waitstaff all arranged in a neat row in front of Gazel, Yam, and the others seated on their pillows. Now, for the big moment. How would they react? Hmm. Excellent as always. Ka, This is good! With a swig of chilled sake, Gazel grabbed a piece of sashimi, and it certainly didn't seem to disappoint him. Yam, meanwhile, was enwrapped at his first bite, expressing himself in his usual honest, and very unnoble, way. The rest of their friends had similar praise for it. I had no idea that monster fish could be so delicious. I thought fish wasn't good for much of anything apart from grilling. Hey, if it tastes good, it tastes good, you know? Yes, and certainly Sir Rimuru has never brought us anything short of excellent. Good, good, glad I had everyone satisfied. And even better, a large number of people were observing their reactions. Me too. 
I'd like to have some. The moment one noble shouted that, a mad dash of orders for Hakuro ensued. Now it was a big hit, one that made Hakuro happy, if a little regretful. Yeah, I wasn't so sure he'd have something to enjoy with his sake tonight after all. I actually have another spear tuna on hand, let's surprise him with it afterward. After Hanada and Yuki kicked off with their light banter, they were exchanging heated opinions about every other topic in the world with each other, drinks in hand. It was hard to tell if they liked or hated each other, but their little debate over wasabi had turned this offering into a success story. It wouldn't be nice to interrupt them now, so I resolved to thank them later. So the party continued, so far, I'd call it a big success. All the food, western and eastern style, was earning raves. This was a, come if you like, thing, nobody's attendance was required, but a lot of people showed up anyway. If we kept up relations with them all, I'd have to be sure to dangle these foodstuffs in front of their eyes and tell them we could get a regular supply going. This much, too, was as I'd planned it. This kind of on-the-ground PR was my job. I'm not just here to live it up and dine on the hog, no. I'm not extravagant and selfish, that was all prep work for a chance like this. But enough excuses. In that way as well, the event was proceeding as planned. But then... Urgent news, sir. A soldier burst into the room. I guess we had a problem. As one would expect, there were guards posted all around this reception hall, including the personal bodyguards of the political figures inside. The area around the building was thus full of people, and if there was an issue out there, it was likely to be a serious one. What's up? What happened? I spoke slowly to the soldier to calm him down. I'd love to run out and see things for myself, but I couldn't act agitated right now. But before the soldier could answer, a large contingent of bodyguards from all manner of nations tore into the room at great haste. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.